right, the podcast mamas are back, and we are here to be entertained all day long. And Ryan is going to kick it off for us. Let's go, Ryan. It's time for bed, oh, it's time for you. Mom and Dan says what you gotta do. We don't care if you ain't tired. Take it from the one whom you so admired. It's bedtime for Ella Missy. Don't you cry or go and miss it. No more games and no running around. Cause we don't wanna hear another sound. Just take your bell and get tucked in. And don't make us swear again and again. Welcome back to the show. I am Carly here with Nicole. Hello, everyone. And our guest star, Miss Laura. Miss Laura's life skills. Miss Laura, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Now, today is kind of special because normally when we've had you on the show, we've talked a lot about your skills, if you will. Yes. With handling teaching parents and helping children who have any kind of disability, whether it be, you know, a cognitive issue, a physical issue. You've just, you've been in this since how old were you working with kids that have special needs? Kids that have special needs. I've been doing this since college. So like 2000. 2006. Okay. That makes you kind of qualified. You yeah. A lot of a good experience there. And along the way, your journey has shifted and transformed and you've helped families, you've helped children, you've helped young adults. I mean, let's face it, those kids that were once kids you were working with transitioned into young adults. So here you are. Yes. But yes. today, today's podcast is different. Can you share with us what you're bringing to the table today? So today I just wanted to share my other passion, which is self-care. Um, I got into this. Yeah, I got into this because obviously uh, this field that I work in is, is kind of grueling. It's really intense on an emotional, mental, and physical level. And I found myself feeling more and more drained. And so I needed to figure out some self-care practices to offset that. And I noticed that um, my students really benefit from it because everyone benefits from a nervous system that's running at baseline. And I think a lot of our mamas out there really benefit from self-care too. And they're the population that I think have the hardest time finding that time, putting themselves first, particularly without feeling guilty But it's It's just, it's it's so needed to keep functioning at a level that's going to benefit their families. Yeah. I mean, more than ever. And this year has been an interesting year for me because I have not connected with as many moms who have children that have needs um, as much as I have this year in particular. Wow. There's definitely a scope of, of, practice for all these moms, right? Some of right. these moms, no, they, their kid is their life. They don't see it any other way. They don't take right. time for themselves, be they a single mom or a mar- in a marriage. Um, right. And then there's the mom that probably, you know, just goes in the opposite direction, if you will, probably right. doesn't you know, have the balance. So she's out the door doing all the things. And I'm like, hmm, how's it going on the other scope of the, of the side of this, you know? Right. Uh, so, um, but yeah, they're obviously work-life balance. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And Nicole, hard. I, mean, I, I just want to say that I, I do think um, to both of your points, I think that self-care obviously is so important. I will tell you, I am terrible at it. I am the worst. I do not do it at all. Like very, very little. 
uh, Miss Laura. I think that maybe some of it is like guilt or something, but I put everyone in the house first to include the dog, (laughs) to include the dog. I I am dead serious. The dog gets doctor's appointments. The dog gets his hair done more than me. (laughs) You name it. Um, and, And I think you do see women. It's so important. And I just read something that said, sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. And I think that uh, so many people, um, they don't realize that I'm one of those people. I think I need to go, 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 go. I am able to relax, but I think I confuse self-care with indulgence maybe is what happens. And that's so not true. Right, exactly. And I feel like that's sort of a program that we've been taught, particularly as women. I feel like, you know, we're in a whole different ball game than the men are. God love them, but we have to work harder. We have to work smarter. We feel like we have to be on that hamster wheel just to be seen and heard and valued in the same ways. And we're killing ourselves doing it. Um, I had so many health problems when I was just running myself ragged and I was like, what am I doing? Like I'm literally burning myself into the ground right now. So I had to come full stop and really focus on self-care. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are, what are some ways you are working on self-care then, or how are you tying this in? I'm sorry. I probably cut you off earlier on that. No, you're good. Um, one of the biggest ways when I, uh, left the working in the school districts and started working in the homes was really, truly creating a work-life balance. Um, this job for me, because I am a person who lives, uh, self-diagnosed with chronic fatigue, which means 50% of the mornings or more, it used to be like 80%. I think I've got it down to like 50, 60% of mornings when I wake up, I'm just as exhausted, if not more so than when I went to bed, which is not a great way to start the day. Um, as stated before too, these jobs for me are very mental, emotional, and sometimes physical. I've gotten out of a lot of the you know physical behaviors, thankfully. But my brain is still running on overdrive for these kids constantly. I also have a job where, like, there's no, like, shooting the shit at the water cooler for me, right? Like, when I walk in the door, I am on until the moment I walk out, period. Or that kid's running all over me. Um, So it's it's just – it's a high-intensity job for me. So I – cut way back on my hours to find that work-life balance. I um, also have three-day weekends every weekend. I no longer work Fridays, which allows me to take that extra time to myself. Or if work starts to pile up, if I need to complete a makeup session or we really need to have a meeting and nobody has time during the week, it just gives me that extra little safety net to get those things done. So they're not piling up throughout my work week. Um, I've created a super cute little worksheet for myself that I fill out every day. Cause hello teacher over here. Um, where I write down like what I'm eating, what supplements I'm taking, how much I'm moving, what my mood is like throughout the day. Um, and it just kind of helps me keep track and see like where are the holes happening? What can I do better tomorrow? That sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I got into things like meditation, breath work, cranial sacral therapy, Um, I have what I call my healing tribe and I try and go see somebody every other week or so. Um, So that's like, yeah, a massage or I go to my physical therapist or I go to my Cairo or whatever um, just to kind of keep keep making sure that, you know, my body is in motion. Right. Just like you take Mm -hmm. your car in every so often, you know, you got to get your oil change, whatever. We have to be doing the same for ourselves. So no, very, very true. Very, very true. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say for myself, I'm pretty good at getting in some pampering. I do regularly schedule 
hampering. The awesome. one the one thing that I don't do that I immensely feel guilty about and I see other people doing more so than me is um, like travel, like going out yeah. of town. You know, I see a lot of people that will be at a girl's trip or um, even husbands and wives, whatever the case may be. But um, I am never, you know, without my children. So um, and I think I was even sharing with Nicole. We talked about this on another podcast about how Nicole had not been out of town on a girl's weekend in forever. And she just went. And Nicole, okay. what happened when you were on that trip? It was like text, 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 call, call, call from the from the kids, right? And oh and, yeah, I wasn't one bit relaxed. Yeah, and and mm-hmm. on top of that, you missed something too that you were kind of bummed out about. What did you miss? Yes, something happened, um, and you were like, "Oh my gosh, I cannot believe the one time I go out of town, I missed this." Yeah, I can't remember it now. But I can't remember what it was. So, yeah, I I had told you, like, for me, um, I don't go away without my kids either. Um, and so right now, though, I'm in a little bit of a different phase. I actually don't care because I have total FOMO. I'm, like, worried about missing things my son's senior year and time feels like it's flying But yes, I agree. I have friends that just seem to travel all the time and they're constantly going away and getting away. So I don't mind that version, that like version, missing out on that version of self-care. I mean, I feel like that's all in due time for me, but like more so just the day to day stuff and the pampering. I'm just not good at at all. And yeah. it's important. It's super yeah. important. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I'm not a big traveler. Um, so watching people go off and travel the world isn't really – I don't get super jealous about it. Um, but I have noticed that it is a really good reset for me if I can get out even one or two nights sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to break up the routine for me yeah. is really good. I'm – Um, I feel like I'm a lot like my kiddos on the spectrum where I really rely on routine and schedules. And sometimes it's really important to step away from that because growth can happen there too. Yeah. Um, No, that's a great point. A great, great point. I have a, um, uh, a suggestion for anyone listening uh, for an opportunity of pampering and self-care that I've just learned about. And I made an appointment for myself today, in fact. Ooh. It, wow. So this, what is it? This is all over the infamous TikTok and other social media sites. It is, and here locally in Arizona, it is called the Zen Head Spa, where you go in and they will massage your head and scalp and all of that jazz for however long of time period that you pay for. So I'm going for 45 minutes of basically shampoo, conditioner, essential oils, all the tools to scrub my scalp. This will help also reignite maybe some follicles that are have burnt out. <laughs> Potentially, I mean, that's what the word is. But, um, but yeah, you can get scalp treatments. You can get a a massage from 30 minutes up to an hour, hour and a half. They'll sit there and rub your head. Wow. Um, Oh, God. Not super expensive compared to like a massage or anything like that because obviously it's just your head. But they do tons of nice treatments and use fun little tools and even that little laser thing that helps to like um, just stimulate blood flow, if you will, to your scalp. Wow. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try this out today at 4 o'clock, and I can't wait to report back. Let you know. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I've legit booked with my hairdresser to just wash my hair before. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It I'm is. Like, Can you just do it? Can you just, like, because it just feels so good. I know. And I feel like, all the neurons. Do it. All the neurons are synapsing. Yes. It's like a recharge for my nervous system. I love that. 
So Nicole, I suggest that maybe you set a goal for yourself to look into seeing if there is a head spa near you for you to try. Okay. Because it's not like a commitment like a massage is. You know, you go in for a massage and it's an hour plus commitment. You know, this could be, hey, I just need a break. I need a good little nap and someone to take care of my neurons. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I would like that. I mean, I have a hard time sometimes even like shutting, shutting down. down. Like I would like blazing hot water I would love <laughs> and not like super hard. Like I hate when I sit down in that chair yeah. and then this like 15 year old is like squeezing oh. my head and I'm like, oh gosh, no, ow, ow, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I have a hard time relaxing, but I actually do like the thought of that. I know. So I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Who knows? This could be a new thing that we get to promote here for the people of the world. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. What, Very dog barking. What other tips do you have for us, Miss Laura? Do you also have a, um, I've seen it on social media, where you gather ladies together. Anna, is it bi-monthly? Is it just monthly? Yeah. What is it? It's, yeah, it's twice a month. Okay. Um, and I started it in June. I've had this calling in my heart for years and just kind of sat on it and sat on it. And then was like, you know, I've really taken a, a bigger stride in building up my business this year. And I had another girlfriend who's becoming an entrepreneur. She's um, she is an art teacher in the district, but, but is trying, trying to take her actual art and turn that um, into a bigger business because, because she, she also, also is fairly friend. miserable in the district and would like to leave. So, um, just, and even though her business is obviously very different from mine, we're still jumping a lot of the same hoops of like getting a website going and trying to find clients and how do we market ourselves and, you know, doing very similar things. And I have just decided that the world needs more love. And I also have decided that I just want to see more women supporting women. I feel like we can be really hard on ourselves and each other. Um, if for just no reason. And I thought if I could create a safe space where women could come together and just sort of practice different modes of communication and self-care and just be um, that beautiful things could happen. And, and they have, they've really, the women are starting to connect. We have a whole, um, text, um, text message, message thread, thread on the side that we can chat between, um, zoom calls. And so, yeah, I just bring everybody together on zoom, um, once or twice a month. And I usually do a little presentation on something. Um, I started it in June. We talked about it's halfway to the holidays. Let's not panic. Let's not beat ourselves up for whatever New Year's resolutions that have been sitting by the wayside. Let's just pick them back up. Do we need to change them? Do we need to break them down? Do we want to keep them just as they are and just try again? And it's fine. Um, in July, we talked about finding our freedom. Have you ladies heard of Bicycle Face? No. No. <laughs> so I found this video of this woman who um, gave this speech at a college graduation last spring and added in one last little history lesson on Bicycle Face, which came about in the late 1800s when bicycles were created. Um, women started riding bicycles and this was the first time that they were able to get around on their own. They didn't have to wait for their husband to drop the horse and carriage or, you know, to get their Ford running or whatever. Um, so women were hopping on their bikes and meeting up together and becoming suffragettes and things. And this freaked the men out, quite frankly. And so they came up with bicycle face. You guys, you don't want to get on your bikes. You're going to get bicycle face. It's a very stern look and your jaw gets clenched and your eyes bulge out of your head. I mean, it, it's literally ridiculous when you hear about it. But decades later, 
the same thing happened when Roe v. Wade was passed and women started going more and more into the workplace. Well, then they came up with imposter syndrome. So really, the discussion was on imposter syndrome and how that can be a barrier to a lot of women for trying or stepping forward in different ways. And so for July, right, freedom of our country, we talked about finding your freedom. And what would it mean if we just took away labels like imposter syndrome? What if we just did the thing and didn't care what anybody thought? Period. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It was really exciting and it was, it was really freeing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, just kind of things like that this past month, um, this past weekend, we just had our first guest speaker. I had my, one of my friends come on and talk about breath work and teach three different techniques that they could start using that day. Super easy, super simple that really help with overwhelm and brain fog. And I mean, you can do them on your two minute bathroom break, you know, like just real yes. and easy things. So it's, it's, um, I'm trying to bring women together. I'm trying to give them actual tools that they can start using that day that are effective, quick, easy, whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah. That's incredible. You, you said something that kind of triggered, um, me, uh, in a good way. Um, the, the women who, you know, women support women bit, right. Yes. And yes. sometimes when, okay, I'm sure you guys have all been in this situation. You might be out somewhere and you see a beautiful woman walk in mm -hmm. and she just, she's so well put together. And do you ever have the impetus to compliment her? Oh, you know, always. I mean, I was out the other over the weekend, made a new friend, and she was shocking. She, what's that? Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> and she's she's lovely. She's not from around here. She's actually from Alabama, but she was visiting, oh. and she uh, and the waitress at was, was at our working our table complimented her on her beautiful red hair, and yeah. and I thought. Gosh, I love when women do that. I love, yeah. I love so much when we do that and we need to do that more often. And, you know, every so often I'll see somebody and I'll say, oh my gosh, I love this about you. you you're so well put together. Or I'll see a mom struggling with her kid and I'll say, hang in there, mama. It, the light's at the end of the tunnel or something like that. I, yeah. I would love for us to even walk away from this conversation today and seek out that person that we're going to give the props to today, you know, because yeah, it's, absolutely. Mm -hmm. it is, it is, there's so many times people can be unkind and judgy and too much engrossed in what they have going on to find it within themselves to be nice to somebody else. And, yeah. um, and myself included, you know, I get very caught up in my own stuff over here, you know? Oh, we all do. So, um, yeah. But gosh, I was just thinking like, it's so true and it feels so, it feels good on this side, you know, mm -hmm. making somebody else feel good. And how good did it feel for that woman to hear mm -hmm. this compliment? And especially this new friend that I made, because she's from Alabama, you know, she's not from Scottsdale where there's, you know, a stigma of a certain yes. type, right? And she, I'm, I got the impression that she felt like a little bit of a fish out of water here. How bad? <laughs> right? And this sweet, young waitress just couldn't stop complimenting how lovely she looked. And I was like, yes, yes, we need more of this. And it's a reminder wow. to me to do it more too. I love that you brought that up because that's actually the way I end my circles. Mm -hmm. So because everyone's um, hopefully everyone has shared, at least at the beginning, I, we start with weekend highlights, which I got from my high school dance teacher. So everyone goes around and shares whatever their weekend highlight was. Okay. And then I, I offer moments to share throughout, but no one should ever feel obligated or, you know, shamed into it. Um, and then at the end, I, I start it off, but I have everyone go around and say something nice about someone else in the circle. Neat. Well, we can do that here today. Mm -hmm. That would be great. I love that. I love that. Let me see. Yeah. 
It's, I was so nervous to do it the first time. Oh my gosh, I was so nervous. And I got so much good feedback on it because it, really is true and it does feel good. And, it, and it's almost, it almost hits harder coming from strangers. Cause even though I know everyone in the circle, they don't necessarily know each other. Yeah. Um, so they've maybe heard about each other because I'm very close with all my friends. I, I, and I'm constantly sharing positive things about other people. Mm -hmm. Um, so they've kind of heard about each other a bit. So it was fun for them to put faces to the names, but they don't really know each other. And so watching them start to connect and compliment each other has just been you know, amazing. Oh, that's, that's really neat. And you facilitated that. You facilitated that. You made that happen. Which is yes. really, really cool. So, yes. well, Miss Laura, I love when I see your face on social media, that laughing image that you posted. Yep, that one. Yep. <laughs> every time, just so you know, every time I see it, it makes me smile. So, Aww. more of that. I love seeing more Aww. of that because I can feel the joy and it makes me happy. So you are definitely putting something out there that maybe you don't even know how effective it is. Just the image alone. The image alone elicits a a joy feedback loop. A loop. So thank you for posting that because I love seeing that. So more of that, please. Okay. Nicole, I've been thinking about you so much because every time we talk on a weekly basis, we somehow do go off into our um, college boy conversations, our college boy, because we've got oh, Lord. Both of our sons, God. our seniors, Not today. and going <laughs> away to school next year. And we've talked uh-huh. about the change that's going to happen in our households from this and all of this stuff to get there, right? Like this path that we're on right now is hard. It's emotional. You want the best for them. You know that ultimately they'll be where they're supposed to be. And Nicole and I have really been in, you know, in the mud, you know, this season, right? It's like the season of very tough stuff going on with applications, figuring out where they're going to fit in and the emotional stuff that goes with it. Yeah. But it has been so wonderful to see Nicole shine like she does as a mother because she loves this boy so much (laughs) and i know how affected she's going to be when he leaves so gosh having her to share these conversations with but seeing her at her you know finest where she's trying to make stuff happen for her son is really um special i guess you could say well thank you you would have certainly liked me then yesterday when (laughs) He was on college visits with his father for the past two days, and I was just <laughs> calling aggressively to check in and um, letting him know everything else he needs to, to do. Did you make the doing. tour time? <laughs> mm-hmm. You got it. You got it. Well, I just wanted to say that for me, it's been a huge joy getting to know and learn about Miss Laura and that I am super impressed Every time we get on the phone or on the Zoom in terms of like what you are giving to others. Um, And like for me, like it's so nice to hear you're doing this whole self-care thing because I view you as like so just completely, um, I don't know if the word is selfless, but like even this, like you're helping other women to do this or, you know, in your day to day career helping these special needs children and their families. Um, I mean, it's just like you're giving people a gift every day. And so I am so impressed by that. Thank you. And then Carly, uh, almost on that same note, when it comes to being like absolutely selfless, there's no, I, I, the fact that what you do day in, day out it's funny that you mentioned me being a mom because I feel like you're the epitome of like you go above and beyond. It's, you know, that you even have anything left in the tank after (laughs) getting Ella ready in the morning is just beyond admirable. And you do it all with the most upbeat personality of anyone I know. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you, honey. 
Thank you. You stole mine, Nicole. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I jumped in there, Miss Laura. Right. (laughs) No, but truly, um, I mean, Carly, you're just constantly thinking of others. Like, I love the little kits you put together for your nieces and nephews that Ella helps for her cousins and things. I mean, your parties are next level. You're always, you know, shooting me a random surprise thank you note or something. I mean, it just working for you. I never felt unappreciated, um, which is huge in this field because um, t- teachers are off. It's awful, a thankless job, honestly. Um, and I never felt that with you. I always felt super appreciated from day one. Um, so thank you for that. And, and thank you for sharing your beautiful family with me. And it's just, I mean, I would not be who I am today without you and Ella. So, um, you. you guys are really incredible with really huge hearts. And, and it, we see a lot of that in Ella too, right? Her empathy, Oh, yeah. comes from her mama like it's it's really cool to see the two of you in action Thank you. um and Nicole equally I I've loved getting to know you too and you always have really positive things to say and share and that's huge like so many people f- can focus on so many negatives and you're always sharing these positive points and it's just lovely thank you so much well, thank you yeah. Those humor that she always brings to yes. everything, <laughs> hands down, all of this humor. <laughs> <laughs> there is another side that I keep a little hidden on here sometimes, but yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, well, you guys, we are going to close out the show with our favorite guitarist. So thank you to everyone who listened in today and was a part of this circle because it is truly a special place to be able to come and chat about all the things, um, not just the special needs life, but the mama's life. Let's all look out for each other a little bit more, right? Thanks for listening. <laughs>